Folks, welcome back to another video. Back on Sling Mountain today. That must mean it's grim outside. It is. It's proper Welsh drizzle today. It's been non-stop. It'd be soaked out there within five minutes, kind of thing. Hopefully, it will dry off for the dog walk later on. I'm supposed to be working today. I'm supposed to be doing some coaching um, on sport climbing stuff. My first bit of work uh, since all this lockdown stuff began, uh, but I've postponed it until tomorrow because I, I can and the clients can, and I think the weather forecast is going to be a bit better. So. Uh, we try and make the most some dry rock rather than very slippery wet rock. Now this video today is all about staying tangle free with half ropes or double ropes, they're the same thing. Now when uh, I'm with beginners and stuff, uh, I, I recommend people start track climbing on a single, it's just more simple. Yeah, nothing more exciting than that, it's just more simple. But at some point you will want to progress on to using double or half ropes. I'll put a link up uh, in the corner there to another video I've done uh, that covers the pros and cons of half ropes. I'm not going to go into that now, but almost certainly you will want them at some point. I'll also put a link in the description because I came across um, it was quite a bargain actually, 135 quid for a pair of 50s. That's a pretty good price actually. Uh, so I'll put that in the description below. Kind of five little subjects headings for this one that I may or may not put on the video, um, but let's crack on with it. The first thing, right? You can't see the floor here, but what I've done is simulated being at the climb and I've flaked the ropes into two separate piles. So I've got pink on that side, blue on that side, and I'm going to say pink on the left, blue on the right, because I'm talking about it in terms of facing the rock and that's key, just to be nice and clear with all this. So it's really important that, they, that you start tangle free. If you've got tangles from the start, they're only going to get worse. They never get better of their own accord, so you're going to have to have uh, a bit of a faff sorting them out at some point. So start tangle free. One on one side clearly, one on the other side. I've tied in left and right. My mate's going to tie into the same left and right, okay? Sounds obvious, but you know sometimes there's a lot of stuff going on at the beginning of a climb, and maybe you're nervous, maybe you're excited, whatever it is. Look after these little things though, All right? Left, right, I'm going to give these two ropes to my mate, like so, so they're left and right when they put them uh, on belay as well. We're going to do our buddy check every single time, right? And I'm going to make sure that I check their belay, not that it's just done up and safe, but that it's loaded the right way, and we just kind of hold the ropes like this out to the side a little bit, and then you can see clearly if they're, they're good, and they're obviously going to check my knots and the normal buddy check things as well. It's really important, you know, that that's like, I think, the, the kind of last thing that happens before you start climbing. Because one, obviously it's the whole safety thing, but two, in terms of what we're talking about now, it's really easy to buddy check and go, oh, I'm just going to sort this out. And then suddenly you've spun round once and you've introduced a twist already to the rope. And as I say, they're only going to get worse. It's the same when your mate starts to climb. Make sure, well, they, they can be making sure themselves but that they don't spin around because they need to take a wheel or something like that or get there, but they've forgotten to... Um, pick up their chalk bags, so they go back to the bag and spin around, so stay in that one orientation the whole time. Okay. The next part where things can go wrong is when you're actually climbing. Okay. I've got a sling over here, a sling over here, let's imagine they're bits of gear. When I come up to them, we're going to keep one rope as the left rope, pink in this case, blue as the right bit of rope. Remember these, I'm just simulating these as quick draws, so I'm not going to do them up. Okay, so that's it. And now you can see they're running nice and parallel, there's no crossings over and stuff. When you're climbing the route, we're, we're trying to think like one step ahead. When we're placing that bit of gear, we're thinking, right, what rope am I going to clip to it? And to know that, you need to sort of know where you've come from, but where you're going as well. Where's the route go from here? Is it straight up? Is it right a bit, left a bit? You know, you'll get that wrong sometimes as well because you think it's going slightly to the left, but actually the, the moves are easier to the right. So you will get it wrong and, and that's okay. You've got to accept these things. We try our best not to. If the ropes do cross over, that's not inherently a big issue, okay? It's not, it doesn't look great in your photos for Instagram and stuff, but one little crossing is not the end of the world. But what one crossing can lead to is then the next one being misclipped again, and then they actually get a twist in them. The twist, as I say, they only get worse, you get more twists, never less twists, that's just the way it goes. They get more. 
Why do those twists matter though in terms of the climbing? Well, actually sometimes the twist can go up to a bit of gear and as you're climbing up, it can lift a bit of gear out, right? Or just create a bit of rope drag as it's all rubbing over each other. So make it harder for you to actually climb on. So try and keep them very much left, very much right. Sometimes you'll be traversing though. Then I tend to have one high, one low, okay? But do accept that you might make an error and that's okay. Just, just keep on top of it as much as you possibly can. Once you've done the pitch of climbing, this is the biggest area with matching or a multi-pitch now. The biggest area for getting these uh, tangles into the system is when you're building the belay. So same as at the bottom when I said stay facing this way, now it's really important as well. Let's imagine I've climbed onto my nice belay ledge, it's a nice big one so I'm not really stressed or anything, and I'm looking for the gear all over the place. I see one bit over here, great, and then I come back over here, great. I've kept facing the rock. Again, if I go and clip a bit here and then spin around that way, I've put a twist into the rope. So stay face onto the rock. Let's build this belay. Place me, uh, they're in reach, aren't they? So I can do my little clovich, been practicing the one-handed clovitches. Uh, and up to that one, so it's the same as on the route. Blue on the right, pink on the left, do them up. So I'll tighten them a bit more perhaps and get myself completely happy on it, but that will do for this demonstration. So again, they're nice and clear, aren't they? I haven't crossed at this point either. What's next? I've got to pull in the rope, haven't I? Shout safe and all that kind of thing. Now I could just pile the ropes on the floor until it goes tight onto my mate. Great. If I've got a big ledge, that's exactly what I'll do, okay? Uh, I won't do anything more complicated unless I need to. If I was on like a hanging belay, the next thing I'll do though is I'll, start, I'll lap the ropes over here, okay? There's a couple of schools of thought on how to do this. Some people start quite short and get longer as they go. I'm the other way though personally and some people will tell me I'm wrong for this, others will agree but hey ho that's climbing. I start nice and long. How long you go depends on how much space you've got. If there's loads of roots, let's say you're at Traumatic and there's trees around, there's loads of roots. If you go with these too long, at some point when you're trying to belay and give out a little higher up or whatever, you'll pull and they'll be stuck on a root or a spike or a rock. So you've just got to use a bit of judgment there. But I start as long as I can and go shorter as I go. So only by a little bit on each lap. For me, what that means is when I'm then giving out later on, they just kind of come off nicely because the last thing you want when your mates on a hard move is for those ropes to have created a loop within a loop and get twisted and tangled and you'd be suddenly having to faff with this big ball of rope while they're on this hard move trying to move going, give me some slack, I can't, I can't, I can't. Number one way to fall out on a multi-pitch climb, I'd imagine. Uh, so do think about that as well. Right, let's imagine though that we've just put it on the floor. I get my belay plate, <coughs> excuse me, I'll clip that in. And I think about the orientation straight away. So that's how it's gonna sit. So I want pink on that side, blue on that side. So make sure the twists are out of the rope now, and then we can load them in. Get that in there, there we go. So we've still got no twists, we're winning. Pink on that side, blue on that side, happy days, we can do what we need to do. I wouldn't obviously let go, but for this I'm just gonna let go now. My mate climbs up, having not done any spinning on the spot or anything while they've been sorting their shoes out and stuff, so we're still tangle free, we're winning. The next part is when my mate gets to the belay. What do they do? Are they leading the next pitch? That's what we normally do in the UK, isn't it? We alternate lead. Are they building a belay here and me leading the next pitch, block leading? You've got to think about that because that affects where they clip into and stuff here. So. I've said we're on a big ledge, but imagine this is a bit more of a hanging belay and I want my mate to clip into this lot to stay safe. I don't want him dangling on me or anything. If it's on a ledge, you might be, life's a bit easier. But if we're hanging and they need to go into these points, where are they going to go into them? Well, they need to put fresh carabiners into them. Okay, we don't open mine up because that's a bit sketchy, isn't it? But if I'm leading next again, where are my ropes going to go? They're going to go up, aren't they? So my mate needs to go underneath mine, right? Because otherwise we're going to get a twist or a tangle, aren't we? Because my ropes will then have to go over his ropes as I lead on up. If they're leading the next pitch, which we would normally do, 
then it's going to be the opposite, isn't it? Because if they're underneath and then they're leading, they're going to pull up and over my ropes. So if they're leading the next pitch, they all go on top of mine, right? And onwards and upwards when they unclip and go. Tangle free and all that kind of thing. It's all pretty simple, this, isn't it? There's nothing like rocket science to it. It's just thinking a step ahead. Who's leading the next pitch? Which way does it go? Does it go off that way or does it go off that way? That's going to affect twists and tangles, isn't it? It's going to affect where I stand and, and where we put my mate when they come up onto the ledge as well. So we're always thinking that step or two ahead. That's the kind of theme to all this, isn't it? It's thinking that step ahead and then you can prevent those twists and tangles. What happens if you do get twists and tangles? You will get twists and tangles. You just, you have to accept that. We want to minimize them, and I don't like getting twists and tangles, but something will happen at some point, and sometimes there's a twist in the rope, uh, and you don't even know how it's got there. It's like a mystery. You think back to what happened on the pitch, and you can't really think of what happened, but something happened, and you just didn't notice it. It's never the rope's fault. This is like an inanimate object. The rope doesn't care about you. It doesn't want to give you an easy time. It doesn't want to give you a hard time though. It is just a rope. The only thing that puts twists and tangles in the rope is you and your mate, all right? If I do get a twist though, it, there's usually an easy solution, right? It's usually a matter of thinking a little step ahead again and going, right, which way do I need to cross or uncross? So it's normally like a putting it over your head or a standing over it kind of affair. You should only ever have one or two twists at the max. If you've got like 10 twists, things have been going wildly wrong at every step along the way. Um, but usually just a spin on the spot one way or the other way or a rope over your head or under your feet should sort it out. Just use a, uh, you know, give it a bit of thought and think, all right, what do I need to do? All these things of, you know, other videos I've done as well of being efficient and everything means you can get more climbing done and just have a nicer time doing it. Yes, I love being geeky, getting all this right first time. Uh, it's satisfying, isn't it? But the reason I want to get it right first time is to have a nice, smooth, efficient, fun day out. That's what it's all about, isn't it? So as with most of these things, prevention is better than cure. So think those steps ahead, look at it all the time, keep them tangle free, winning, you're having a nice day. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it was useful. Um, just remember, this video was all about climbing you and your mate in a pair, having a nice time. It wasn't about working with, you know, having two clients on the end of ropes, because often we'll climb in a three for work. Uh, and sometimes you will just for fun as well. It's a nice sociable way of climbing. Uh, things are inevitably a bit slower, but it's nice because your big layer's always got someone to chat to. It can be a bit lonely climbing, kind of. You're always uh, on your own, either climbing on your own big layer, and you meet for a couple of minutes, then off you go again. But this was just about you and your mate climbing, okay? I will do a video at some point about climbing as a three. Just need to give it a bit more thought. Uh, it might be one for being outside, really. Please do fire away with any questions, though. As always, happy to answer as best I can. Um, I'm sure there's loads more tips, so you know, chuck them in the comments below if you've got a nice one that, that works well for you and is worth sharing. It's always good to hear. Do find us on Insta, find us on Facebook. I say it every time, I know, but give us a like, give us a follow on there. There's different pictures and different, uh, when I find bargains and stuff, I put them on my on uh, Facebook and stuff like that. Click the like button, smash the subscribe button. That's massively appreciated as well. Over 2,000 uh, subscribers on YouTube. Honestly, it blows my mind. Thanks very much if you've liked or subscribed or even just watched. That's great as well. Once again, I hope you've enjoyed this video. More videos coming up very soon. Mm -hmm.